So I'm gonna explain a little bit about regular keys for XRPL accounts. So you might have heard of rekeying your account or maybe a vanity address with a regular key and everybody's asking how does it work, what is it, how can I use it in sum and I'm gonna explain a little bit and hopefully you'll understand what regular keys are after this. So a normal XRPL account is based on a secret, also known as a family seed, which starts with a lowercase s. So that's the thing you need to hide from everybody, because as soon as someone gains access over the family seed, over the secret, your funds are compromised. So then your secret derives to your account address, which starts with the lowercase r. So that's actually where you transfer your XRP to, and these days it can be a uppercase X as well, but you don't see them very often uh, right now, may change in the future. So let's focus on the R address. And uh, actually the S address can be used to write on the XRP ledger, and the R address can be used to read transactions. So if you go to Explorer like Bithomp or XRP Scan, you can find all the transactions of a specific account by the R address. Now if you look at an account on the XRP ledger, an account may have balance like 200 XRP, but an account also contains certain settings or the XRP ledger stores settings for your account. And the account settings contain a regular key, By default, that's empty, and the account settings contain uh, a few flags like is the master key disabled, yes or no. And by default, of course, the master key is not disabled, which is a good thing because this is the master key, which means if you disable the master key for your account, you can no longer write transactions. Of course, the XRP ledger will prevent you from making a really stupid mistake, which would be to disable a master key while you have no other key configured. So that's not possible. Now, if you generate a second account or a third account or whatever on the XRP ledger, so let's say we generate another one, uh, can be a paper account, can be a ledger, hardware wallet, can be a sum account, we can generate a secret again and we can derive that into the R address, the public account address. There are settings for this account but we're going, not going to use them and there, this, con, this account can be activated with 20 XRP, contains balance, you can then transact using this account but we're not going to do that either, we're not even going to activate the second, the second account we generated. Now what we can do is configure this account to have a regular key and we're going to point it to the R address of the newly generated account. So now, instead of nothing, the account settings for this address will contain the value that we see right here, R whatever, for this account. And what we can do then is disable the master key of this account, which would mean this one becomes completely useless and because this account is configured as a regular key, this is going to be the secret we can use to sign for transactions on this account. So a regular key is not a new secret for your one account, a regular key is actually another account that can even be unactivated, which is configured as the new key, a new account new key for your existing account. Now if you want to use that in sum, if you want to use a re-keyed account like we just did, you're going to import this account as a read-only account because we can no longer write because the master key is disabled. And we're going to import this account, still unactivated, as a read-write account in sum. And if sum sees that you have actually both accounts in your account list, then it will automatically recognize that this account is actually the regular key for that account and this account becomes read-write again, but under the hood some will use this account to sign.